getting into recovery is is a is a lifetime journey. I relapsed after fourteen months. That really put a hole right in the heart of Steps to Hope when we lost these guys. What does fifty thousand pounds bring to Steps to Hope? Steps to Hope saved my life. Hey Troops, thanks very much for tuning in. I'm here with Richard Roncero, who I've met twice in the past, did a couple of videos previously. Uh, Richard, quite a lot of things have happened since we last spoke. We've had something called COVID, obviously. Uh, you've got some government funding. You've now got three properties on the go. Uh, you've got a van. You've got a mobile kitchen. You've got served thousands of meals. You've got thousands of days clean and sober, thousands of pounds raised. You've got Super Saturday. You've got happy stories. You'll no doubt have some sad stories. I know of a couple of them. Bit of comic relief. Uh, many Steps to Hope tattoos and some other stories, no doubt. Richard Oncero, it's a pleasure to meet you once again. Good to see you, Ross. <laughs> How are things? Let's kick off with... I suppose let's kick off with COVID. How has that affected Steps to Hope and your whole operation? I it was a, uh, <clears throat> you know, it just happened overnight for us. Um, I've spoke about it many times. Do you know? I think the last time we spoke, we were running a Sunday and a Monday soup kitchen. Um, That's right. And it just so happens we were campaigning for a a mobile catering van so that we could, you know, reach more people on the streets. So we had purchased that van and it was uh, and getting modified at the time. And then COVID hit. So three days prior to lockdown, everywhere shut and this van had arrived. Um, so literally overnight, we went from two days a week to seven days a week um, serving hot meals. And uh, of course, a lot of our team had to self-isolate. So we're down to like a skeleton team um, and working seven days a week. So it was... It was crazy, you know, it really was. But um, I'm just so super proud of the team for, for stepping up, you know, and, and standing on the front line. You know, we never missed a shift. We, we, yeah. we were daily and it put a lot of strain on the organisation financially, of course. Um, but that's what we're here to do. We're, we're here to support um, our community and the homeless. So, um, aye, it was tough. And trying to learn all about the this new coronavirus whilst out there doing service, you know, it was uh, it was quite stressful at times, you know, it was all these new restrictions and new rules and having almost daily changing. So just trying to do everything right. Um, but of course, be there for the most vulnerable in Edinburgh. So uh, it was tough, but we got through it. And was there ever any, was there ever any doubt that things would, would make it through, Richie? Definitely no. Um, I mean, the the like I said, the the, the donations that we were getting kind of slowed down a little bit. That that yeah. was the worry. That was the worry. But I know what the team's like. Do you know? We, we just we make it happen. Um, that's steps to hopes. A type of organisation where we just roll our sleeves up, um, and we've demonstrated that since the beginning. Um, so no, we were. We were just really grateful that we were in a position that we could make sure people weren't left behind. You know, as I said, a lot of organisations, food services that had been running for years had to close their doors. Wow. Uh, it just so happens that we, we were able to feed on the streets using this catering van. So just really fortunate to be in the position to be of service, you know. And I suppose, you know, they say... In in business, you know, it's it, you can be lucky, and it's all about timing. And I suppose in in your sector, it's it's no different. You were a bit lucky. You just took receipt of the van, and timing COVID just hit, so you were just within a few days, bang bang on. You know that that that's pure. Some would say luck. Some would say it's it's fortuitous. But you know, it happened, and it happened at the right time for you. But you already had that in motion. Uh, so, I guess the question is: Is had you foreseen anything coming when we you know when I start, started first hearing about 
COVID coronavirus coming from, you know, China, for example, you know, I just sort of shrugged it off as it's just some news coming from somewhere else, not not thinking that this this is what was coming. Could you foresee anything happening, Richie? No, I was a bit like yourself, Ross, to be honest. You know, we were just focusing on what we were doing and this seemed to be on the other side of the world. Um, yeah. But you're absolutely right, you know, within a matter of days, um, the world changed uh, and so did the the structure of what we done. Do you know, our soup kitchens had to close as well. Um, and And like I say, I'm just, I'm so looking back, I'm just so grateful that, all these thousands of people had our services there daily um, because if that van wasn't there, I dread to think what would have happened. Do you know, it, it was yeah. no one's fault. It's just we could not get access um, inside, you know, the church halls or the community centres that other places were using. So I'm just so grateful that that, that van arrived when it did and, and we were able to, we had enough people there to, to run it, do you know. So we were out seven days a week for, for a long time. And, you know, mental health is something in the last 12 to 18 months has gone from here. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's been at the forefront of people's minds from here to here in, in the last 12 to 18 months. And no more, you know, relevant cases than people with, with addictions will be suffering from mental health. What have you seen in the last 12 to 18 months? I mean, you're, you're on the front line of dealing with people at the lowest ebb in life, what what have you seen changing in that 12 to 18 months? Yeah, you're absolutely right. You know, it was absolutely heartbreaking um, the first few months. Um, do you know, everyone was, it was a shock to everyone, do you know? Um, and of course, the, the, the homeless community and our service users, no one really understood what was going on. Um, you know, not only did the food services close, but all the recovery meetings shut as well. So people who were trying to engage in recovery or were already in recovery, but went to these meetings to maintain their recovery, people who were thinking about wanting to get clean and sober, all this was taken away. Mm. And everyone started to struggle. You know, we witnessed overdosing um, at our van almost daily, do you know, the, the 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 decline within our service users was just, do you know, talk about feeling powerless. Uh, we just had to stand there and support and, and do the very best we could, but uh, the drug scene was rife. There was zero support out there, and it was just really hard to watch. Do you know, one of the things that we done, thankfully, the recovery meetings, uh, do you know, the, the way the things are now, it's, it's everything's done online, and the recovery meetings took to Zoom. Um, but of course, a lot of our right. service don't have mobile phones and, and stuff like that. So we purchased thousands of pounds worth of brand new smartphones, um, including credit, phone credit. And anyone who wished to attend mutual aid groups, recovery meetings, we were handing these phones out um, free of charge so that they could try and get a bit of support online. Um, but it was tough, you know, really tough. And, you know, was that sort of thing frowned on by by anyone from the outside looking in, saying, OK, well, you're given a dr- drug addict or an alcohol addict, you know, a, a brand new smartphone. Was it w- w- was any was there any kickback from that sort of thing? People, you know, not agreeing with with the policy of 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 giving Drug, drug addicts a smartphone which they could then go and sell and then buy use used to buy drugs or what, what was your take on that <coughs> so we, we, we never we never really got any negative feedback regarding that kind of move but a, a move was required you know because there was yeah. zero or even other organizations that used to do face-to-face support of course everyone was now on lockdown you know we were classed as an essential service we got that from the government so we were allowed to be out there on the streets, on the front line, and, and we had to do something. Do you know, I was very much aware that we were going to lose some of these phones, um, of course. And it's very hard to uh, gauge who 
was going to actually use the phone for the purpose or like you say maybe sell it on for substance and and I know that that did happen uh, but I also know that hundreds of people engaged online um, to recovery meetings so mm-hmm. you know in the nature of addiction it's not like one blanket fits all you know some people it's just it's about timing and and who are we to say you're not getting a phone so we we we, we kind of made a decision at the best of our ability and we handed these phones out and and we served a purpose you know it's risk and reward isn't it it's, yeah. it's absolutely risk and reward it's you know you give 100 out 10 go you've got 90 people attending Absolutely. meetings which is better having 90 attended meet- meetings and, and losing 10 phones Absolutely. you know th- that 90 will will a- in every way benefit the the community the wider community having people 90 people clean if you like will, will way more outweigh 10 phones going missing i think 100%. 100%. yeah yeah good good right uh so we originally in 2019, COVID wasn't a thing back then. We then had another follow-up in January 20, just shy of COVID. Uh, we, you and I have spoke a couple of times on the phone since, uh, but I'm obviously on your, your Facebook group and it is amazing to see, you know, the the, the, the updates. The, the ones that stick out for me is the ones where you've got a man or a woman standing there with one of the circles 90 days clean one year clean and almost a before and after picture that sort of thing that's what you're there for that's what steps to hope are there for absolutely that having the van is wonderful having the three accommodations which we'll we'll get on to but just seeing these people with a little bit of hope in their eyes a little bit a little glint in their eyes and the happiness is that kind of what, I mean, that is what Steps to Hope is all about, but is that what you live for? That's, I, I cannot get enough of it, Ross. I just, it's, the, seeing the transformation within uh, these guys is is just, I, I jump out of my bed and I cannot wait to see what today brings, do you know. Um, this absolutely works. The model that we've built, the programme that we've developed, the structure, the schedule, um, is is producing results, you know, it really is. And you're right, for me, the food is so important, you know, it really is so important because people have to eat. Uh, but for me, it was all about reaching people in addiction and, and, and kind of guiding them into recovery. And the best way for us to do that was to launch a platform for ourselves in which we could engage. And that's what the food services are. They're, they're a a platform not only for people to come along and eat but for us to engage with service users who potentially want to achieve sobriety um, so that serves a purpose there but you're absolutely right when we see people achieving that first day clean and sober away from the chemist that they've been at for 20 years and and, and mm-hmm. you know substances most of their adult life hitting that one day clean and sober and then picking up a 30 day key ring and but there's loads of other wee milestones you know like um hitting their first recovery meeting and like we do group work and, and starting to see their their um timekeeping and all that because we're very chaotic us addicts you know so starting to see wee mini milestones within their journey um is just uh, absolute i can't express how much i love it you know it's uh, yeah um, it, it, to me it look, it's it's almost like the, the perfect marketing strategy in a way you know so, so you know we have a business and you know running a, a charity it seems to be no different you know you've got to get the message out there how do you get the message out there There's, you know we look for testimonials for our website if someone wants a mortgage then if someone wants a mortgage it's great to read testimonials about m- mortgages and, and, and people buying houses and all the rest of it your testimonials are ultimately someone standing with that key that coin uh saying one day sober 30 days sober one year sober that is your marketing message isn't it i think well, i would say it's our it's our evaluation it's it's how we evaluate how our services are are, are, are putting on measure how they're actually working and, and the results you know 
we're, we're fortunate enough that we've got very courageous, not all, uh, but we've got some cour courageous people who are happy for us to follow their story mm -hmm. and become case studies almost, you know, and, and, and show their journey. And, you know, for me, that's, that's how we demonstrate that what we do absolutely works. Um, and, and it's exciting, you know, not only does it show what we do, but it opens up this topic for conversation, which probably no one really spoke about for, well, no one really spoke about that I can remember, you know, now. Absolutely. Our social media, this is a taboo subject that's got a lot of stigma around it, but all of a sudden everyone's talking about it, they're seeing that it is possible and all of we've got this huge, huge, huge support and people rooting um, for these guys, which is amazing, you know, because a lot of these guys, they've, they've told me, you know, they've not maybe had support or that kind of love and, and care and compassion and all of a sudden they've got a community um, backing them and rooting for them and it's, it's just beautiful to see, it really is. Community is the word, isn't it? Community is, is what I see uh, on, on the social media uh, when I was up, uh, up at the church. I, when I was back up at the church, speaking to people, speaking to the, the you know, people that help, people that volunteer, the service users, it is a community. That's mm -hmm. exactly what it is. That, that is the best kind of word. Uh, so, three properties on the go now. That happened, what just, appears to be overnight. Just the three. <laughs> just the three. Just the three. So, how many, how many rooms is that available? And, and, what, what are the rooms for? <clears throat> so, again, it was um, the whole structure had changed. You know, we, we originally we secured our first leased tenancy from a housing association, and that was going to be a it was a two bedroom flat, and it was going to be like a pre rehab. So, people who wanted to be referred to rehab, they would move in there, um, achieve the dose on their prescription so they could get a referral in and then we would refer them and hopefully get a placement. Obviously COVID um, hit and that rehab actually had to close as well, um, which then meant there was a huge, huge waiting list. I think at one point there were, it was like an 18 month waiting list to get in there. Um, so we had to kind of rethink our approach. Um, so <clears throat> the pre-rehab flat kind of, that title got taken off. Um, and it just became a recovery accommodation. So we acquired the second uh, leased property, another two bedroom property. Um, and then we got a five bedroom property, which we had for a few months. And then we recently just gave that up and took on a nine bedroom. So we've got two two bedrooms and a nine bedroom, and these are all recovery accommodations. Wow. Um, so exciting. Um, so, so yeah, so that's, these guys are all working from eight in the morning right through the day till night time on a full schedule, um, steps to hope cover the cost of the rent, the utility, all that type of stuff. All they need to do is follow this daily schedule. Um, and, and that consists of all various different things. They're busy. They're really busy. Is, is that... So talk me through that schedule. Is that things like just operating as day to day, getting up, washing your clothes, washing the dishes, helping prep food, that sort of thing, or is it? Am I totally off the mark? No, oh, it's recovery focused. So, so right. uh, obviously, like helping keeping the, the premises clean and tidy. Do you know, we've got like a hoovering schedule. So a couple of couple of them each day, I'll do the hoovering. Then, like, we'll go for a walk in the morning. Then we'll have group work at ten ten o'clock, say. Um, we've then got one to ones. We've got recovery meetings, yoga, meditation, cooking classes, activities, fitness. We have people come and do massages. Um, there's loads. There's loads. There's written work, and it's all focusing on addiction and recovery. So we're so we're we're, we're kind of teaching the twelve steps within this program. It's mm -hmm. all step focused. Um, and, and, and kind of challenging them in a very loving way um, about maybe their, their, their behaviours and, and thought processes and stuff like that. Um, we're trying to empower them as well. So like, for example, one of the guys we've got is an incredible cook. He's just amazing. So he actually takes the cooking class on a Tuesday and he teaches the rest of his peers a certain dish. 
Um, so we've got, we've got three categories. We've got the cants. I'm in, I'm in the cant group, by the way. Uh, we've got the mediums, and then we've got the cans. So uh, he'll take the cants like myself, and he'll maybe do a, a more simpler dish. Um, but what's beautiful is but we're, now, we're now seeing his peers like at lunchtime, they're now going out to the shops and buying the ingredients and, and starting to make what he's shown them and having that for their lunch. So it's it's kind of support an independent living for when they move on. It's honestly, it's it's it's, it's amazing. And how long are they in that process for? So what I think is really unique about our recovery accommodation is we do not have a criteria when it comes to the prescription medication. Um, do you know a lot of places like rehabs and stuff like that you have to be on a certain dose and stable before being able to get a referral to go in we don't have that um so it really depends on the individual if someone's on like if they're on say 15 millimethadone it's not going to take them as long to come off that than say someone who's on 120 millimethadone so so we don't like i say we don't cap how much you're on it does not matter how much you're on are you willing to engage and follow the schedule? And if you are, we can you can be considered for a placement. Okay. And therefore, what's the criteria for them to be, dare I say, asked to leave then? So, <clears throat> so for them to be asked to leave would be um, once they achieve total sobriety. The the kind of the kind of ideal. A scenario would be for them to achieve 90 days total sobriety away from the chemist and all street substances, including alcohol, um, fully integrated within the recovery community, having a sponsor and, and even potentially started the 12 steps. Once they're in that position, then they're kind of ready to move on. Um, but right. I, we don't have a we're just addicts. We're no medical practitioners, so we don't get involved in how much they choose to detox or reduce down on their prescription. That's between them and their GP or their CPN. Um, so we just support it. Um, but they know when they're moving in that they're going to stabilise from street substance and then begin their detox. Yeah, amazing. So what what I've never really understood then is so addicts will go through a process first and then begin the 12 steps. Is that right? Uh, so to begin the 12 steps, you kind of need to be, well, you need to be clean and sober. Right. Makes away sense. from medication. But once that's been achieved, you're, for me, I needed to get straight on the 12 steps. You know, once I put the drugs down, I needed to get on the 12 steps so that I could stop using and stop picking up. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And Obviously, your story goes back uh, a few years now, doesn't it? And, you know, for anyone watching or listening, you can see the first video. I'll, I'll put links in the descriptions below the first and second video so you can see more of Rich's story, uh, which is a very interesting story. I mean, you, you've come from addiction yourself to the first time with your daughter handing out to where it is today. Now, to my mind and from from what I've followed is you know that that's all happening very very quickly so on on that same course it's just going to exponentially go up over the next I would say another five years you could be I don't know covering Scotland maybe is that is that the goal Richie? So absolutely do you know what I was already starting to do a wee bit of networking through in Glasgow um, but then things started to change a little bit through here you know this nine bedroom guest house is is like a huge huge move for us and um, you know it's costs an absolute fortune so my focus right now is finally tuning that and maintaining that right now so it's sustainable um and there just seems to be every time i, I I'm, I'm thinking about making another move something else kind of develops and and you know i think I phoned you about two years ago and, and asked, how do we go about, because I know you, you deal with mortgages and stuff, how do we go about, you know, a charity buying a property and, and all that kind of stuff? And, and it turns out we needed three-year accounts um, before we could enter into a mortgage. Well, that's just happened. 
Um, you know, we've just we're just getting our third year accounts finalised, so that's definitely on the radar right now. Um, that's always been a dream to actually purchase our own rather than constantly leasing. Um, because the more proper, I think the more proper is we can get a hold of the more people that we can get involved in this programme and this is going to get bigger. But absolutely, Ross, I would love to see this going to Glasgow and Dundee and wherever, down south as well. Do you know, I think Steps to Hope's a fantastic model and, and a yeah. really... I think, well, you know, with the success that you've had so far and undoubtedly the success that you'll have in the future, what that will bring to the wider economy even is so significant you've got and getting people back into work and and off the streets and all the rest of it and i'm assuming i suppose in the beginning your idea was helping people get off the streets has it now gone further than that to, you know this is a much much bigger picture than just getting people off the streets <clears throat> yeah it was do you know it was always about tackling both sides of it. I think when the last time we spoke, you know, addiction, if someone's suffering from addiction, giving them a house and thinking that's going to solve the problem is, is uh, like, I think I used the word ideal. It's a lovely ideal, uh, but really we need to treat the causes and conditions so that they can sustain long-term housing. And I've said that for a long time now. So this was all about, you know, helping addicts achieve sobriety and not only achieve it, but then help them maintain sobriety, show them the tools to actually maintain long-term sobriety, then that stands them in a good stead for, for you know, long-term housing as well. So it's definite hand in hand. Um, but yeah, I, I think Steps to Hope with the right backing and and, and, and the, the more we grow, I think we could seriously make a huge impact on not only the drug death rate in Scotland, uh, but the homelessness as well. <clears throat> Yeah. So talking about backing then, uh, leading straight onto that, in terms of funding, now, uh, I remember the Skipton Bone Society, uh, when we applied to Skipton for you, you got £1,000, and then the, a while after that, they, they, they released another £1,000. So, so all the charities, I think they picked up maybe 10 charities, you guys were one of them, uh, and then they gave you another £1,000. And that, that's wonderful. Now, you talk about backing, but, you know, just even yesterday, seeing your social media stuff yesterday, so the Scottish Government, 50k, is that right? I've seen you with a giant jumbo check yesterday. 50,000. 50k? Richie, that, I mean, what, what, what does that bring to Steps to Hope? What does £50,000 bring to Steps to Hope? First of all, when, when I received that letter, I, I, I broke down. Um, that is a massive um, bit of funding coming our way. Um, so these are restricted funds. You know the 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 the, the, the grants and all that that you go for. Um, they've obviously got certain criteria, and you've got to apply for certain things. It's not just there's um, they're not unrestricted. So so this fifty thousand pound is to cover uh, the recovery support costs. Um, and obviously the activities. We're housing 13 people right now um, and, and we've been taking them out. Part of their schedule is to help reintegrate them within the community, within society, help build their self-esteem, their confidence, help build relationships between us and, and them um, and to show them that you can have fun in recovery. But that's quite costly, you know. So, so this restricted grant is to help support these activities and obviously um, help with the recovery support side of it as well. So someone else coming in and, and helping kind of um, yeah. into the guys. So that just means we don't need to, for the next year, worry about finding funding for that area of Steps to Hope, which is absolutely massive. And again, it gets it allows us to then start looking forward in the same way. Okay, so we're not to spend that anymore because that's now covered so we're weight off the shoulders isn't it it's a big weight off the shoulders Absolutely. From, a, from a cash flow point of view so talking about fun and recovery <laughs> uh steps to hope tattoos <laughs> so i'm i'm not encouraging this <laughs> i'm not going to be getting one uh, 
but yeah, it's do you know, I, it really melts my heart because we are at the end of the day, we're we're a charity, do you know, we're a we're a third sector organisation, um, and for for someone to of their own back feel that they want to put this logo on themselves is is just really humbling and and just um, do you know? I remember one of the guys um, who sadly passed away, uh, Paul. He he came to the Sunday soup kitchen and he says, "I want to show you something." And I said, "What?" And he pulled his sleeve up and I went, "Paul, what have you done?" That was my words. I says, "What have you done?" I says, "Why would you do that?" And he says, uh, "Steps to hope saved my life." Mm-hmm. And and do you know? I get it. I get. I get it. I, 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 if I could describe steps to hope, I would describe it as a feeling. That's how it mm-hmm. feels. You know, steps to hope. The charity is is like a feeling. Um, and there's a lot of. It's a very family loving, passionate uh, group that's involved in it. So, uh, although I'm not uh, encouraging anyone to go and get a tattoo, and certainly not the steps to hope tattoo, it is very humbling uh, that someone would choose to get that on themselves. It's a very intimate act, isn't it? Getting a getting a tattoo, you get your daughter's name tattooed, or your wife's name, or your even your your most favourite band ever tattooed on your arm. Something you're going to keep for life. So, so for I've seen a couple of guys uh, getting the steps to hope tattoos. So for them to be getting those tattoos, it just shows you what it means to them, which is that's their life. You know, they, they, their life is potentially being saved through Steps to Hope, which is which is quite amazing. Now, you mentioned uh, Paul there, which is obviously, it was a very, very sad story, and Ali as well. Yeah. I know, you know, there's 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 obviously some thousands of good stories, but I suppose it comes with the territory that there's some sad stories as well. Can you tell us anything about that? Yeah, it's just, um, <clears throat> this is, this, Getting into recovery is is a is a lifetime journey. Do you know there is no cure, and there's no uh, I'll never be cured, and nor will anyone else. Do you know it's it's a day at a time, and 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 do you know for me I have to maintain my recovery every single day in order to reach the next day clean and sober. Do you know so um, that really put a hole right in the heart of steps to hope when we lost these guys. Um, do you know, it's really hard to, they're not just service users, do you know, um, because we're a band of brothers and sisters, that's that's how it is. So so um, losing someone that was so close to, to the charity uh, was really devastating, absolutely devastating. And um, he's, they're both missed dearly, do you know, we speak about them a lot. Um, still, I think about them every day. Do you know, I watch their wee videos and and all that kind of stuff, and it's a reminder that this is what we're up against. This is mm-hmm. what we're dealing with. Do you know, if you look at the page, the Steps to Hope page on Facebook, it's really exciting and it's all great news and stuff, um, and and it's a success. But there, <clears throat> this is a life or death around, and let me be clear on that. And and if 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 you do not get recovery you're going to die prematurely. If you are in active addiction, you're going to die before your time. Um, and and I was told early days when I got into recovery, Richie, buy a suit because you're going to get invited to weddings and you're going to go to funerals. Um, and, and it is six and a half years now down the line, I, I've been to too many funerals. Mm-hmm. It's And it, it's on the flip of a coin, isn't it? I mean... When I met Paul, he was doing really well at that point. He was, you could tell he was doing well. He looked, he looked well in, consider- in, in comparison to previous <coughs> photographs that I'd seen. I'd never met him prior to when I did meet him, when I was up seeing, when we did that video. And you see photographs on Facebook, it looks well, it looks well, it looks well. And then all of a sudden the next post is, he's dead. And it's it seems to be on the flip of a coin, and that is addiction, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And and you know, I was told that uh, you know addiction is an illness. Um, it really is. And 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 I think, without speaking about anyone's specific journey, you know, like I'll keep it to myself. 
I, I relapsed after 14 months um, and went back out the door. And the relapse happens before the actual physical relapse itself. Do you know, it's, it's stinking thinking coming in. Happens up here. Certain behaviours start to creep in. Do you know, I'm not doing what I should be doing to maintain my recovery. Addiction is an illness and, and <clears throat> this stuff has to be maintained daily. Do you know, and I always say that a relapse always happens prior to the physical relapse itself. Do you know, and that starts off with like maybe stinking thinking, do you know, your thinking's maybe not quite right. Your your behaviours, your old behaviour patterns start to creep in. You're not doing the things that you're meant to be doing daily for your recovery, using the tools, reaching out, all that type of stuff. And before you know it, you're caught out. Do you know, there's a saying that addiction's sitting doing press-ups at the bottom of your bed, waiting for you to wake up. Do you know, it's on you straight away. And if you're not actively doing the things you're meant to be doing, your default setting is just to go back to your old way, uh, yeah. behavior processes and all that kind of stuff. And aye, it's, uh, it's a minefield. It really is. It really is. But Paul, uh, he's, um, he achieved so much and he was a huge inspiration. Um, Ali was just such a, a delight to have at the van. You know, he just lit everyone up. Um, addiction just caught them. Um, and, 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 and that's why it's a reminder to me that I need to continue doing what I need to do for me daily um, so that I can keep going. Yeah, all it takes is a dark moment, doesn't it? To yeah. send someone down that path again. And if they're unfortunate enough to be caught off guard and then, you know, it, it's, it's, uh, it can end up, you know, like Paul and Ali, ultimately. So, so that being said, I, you know, obviously, thanks again for your time, Richie. It's absolutely a pleasure catching up with you. Two things. So, how do service users get in touch with you if uh, they're looking to get some help? Yep. So it's <clears throat> it's just self referral, or if they want to get one of their support workers or that to send us an email or phone. But if they want to pick up the phone, drop us a message on social media, come along to the van, any one of them, um, <clears throat> all they need to do is indicate that they're wanting um, to engage with us and then we can start putting things in place to potentially getting them offered a placement in our recovery accommodation. Okay, good. And I'll put some <clears throat> links in the description below as well. And just as importantly, none of this happens for free. You know, everything that you do has got to be funded and all the money's got to come from somewhere. It comes from the public. You do lots of uh, football cards. You're thankfully getting some money from the government now, which is, is absolutely tremendous, because I know that would be extremely hard to get your hands on. Uh, but how do people donate? Uh, you know, what, what, what are you looking for? And what's the easiest way to make any donations to Steps to Hope? Yeah, so again, um, we've got like, our, through our social media, we've got like our Just Given page. You can donate through Facebook. You can contact us directly through email or message, and we can send our account details over. Do you know? I kind of feel bad on our social media. Our followers are absolutely incredible, and I feel like we're always, always, always asking for donations. But we are non-profit. Everything that we get goes directly back into this organisation, but our expenditure. Has just went through the roof with the scaly how things have went. Yeah, out. yeah. So, and that we keep those donations coming in and reaches much more people. You know, brilliant. And if anyone wants to volunteer, they just get in touch with you. Eh? Get in touch with me, and we have now induction days. So um, just keep an eye out for the next induction day, and we can get you in and go through the process. Brilliant. So I'll stick all the links in the description, Facebook links. Just Given links, everything. So if you're interested and you want to donate, you want to get in touch with Steps to Hope, just uh, see the links in the description below. So it's been Ross Stacey and Richard Roncero. Richie, thanks very much. Thank you, Ross. Cheers, pal.